here we are yet another location it's pretty weird to step aboard Nina and not feel her move underfoot if she were moving now that would be bad This is what awaits me. This one, it's not too bad. I wonder if it was worms. Apparently the worms often uh, get their chance to gain entry when you have like a little abrasion or minor collision kind of thing. That might have been what happened here. That's a nice job of scarfing there on that. Hmm. But I don't know. I don't know the history. Uh, it would be great to get Nina this fair someday, but uh, not this time around. I just got to get some paint on her. Get her, uh, get her scarfing and planking done and reseamed, and get some paint on her. The top sides I can easily make almost this fair. I might be able to pull that off. We'll see. I love this. It's not actually steam powered. I found out it's diesel powered. But that's, that's cool. This prop looks good. When we first hauled her out, Bill said, there's no way this thing's been sitting in the water 10 years. It would be all pink. Um, but I'm pretty sure. So I don't know what to tell him. I love how this piece was made so that this knot was right here. It, they're using the grain to uh, maximize the ability of this piece to support its load. It's, it's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant that they took the time to do that. There's a lot of resin in this piece of wood, a lot of uh, hard, hard grain in there. Things are looking pretty good here. We got more worm damage here, but it'll be all right. I think I can scarf that. Same with the rudder, the rudder, unfortunately. All on this side, on the port side. Uh, the worms got in there because it was the weather side. Why that is, I don't know, but it kind of makes sense. Pintles and gudgeons all look fine. So I took the stupid, nasty chains off. I took the zincs off. There were four. I started trying to take this guy off. Uh, mostly just to see what's going on under there and also because I suspect it's not really needed and it's just trapping moisture and dirt but yeah I had a screw break off I got to take this rudder off and lay it down flat to finish that job and all the rest of it fairing it and there's also a boots a bootstripe that's scribed which is great I'm gonna just go over that because there's places where it's kind of rubbed out um, yeah but we got we got us some worm damage <sighs> You just kind of feel violated. A guy just, yeah. One just sort of feels violated. But uh, it's not too awful. And I think I got to look later. We got a rib here. We got a rib here, I believe. Actually, that's probably just a block. Um, I don't think the worms got into the structural wood. I'm, I'm hoping. But then again, I was hoping there wouldn't be worms, right? <laughs> They're all dead now. They gotta be dead by now, if not later today. I actually saw one of the filthy little bastards hanging out while I was picking away loose compound. Well, here we are. Yet another location. It's pretty weird to step aboard Nina and not feel her move underfoot. If she were moving now, that would be bad. I'm in good company here. Look at that thing. I'm not sure what it is, but it's gorgeous. And another beauty over there. It's for sale, folks. I'll get. I'll set, give you the number if you want. <laughs> uh, I'm about to just make sure she's okay, and then go to lunch, and then get to work. Looks pretty good. I don't know if this is original or not, but that looks very nice. This one, however, is bent. 
I think the other one is too, now that I look at it more closely, but it's no big deal. There's nothing magical about it. This isn't an aircraft. <laughs> it's just a good stainless steel bolt. Looks like there might be a bunch of gunk in here. The bedding, whatever they put in there. And this, there's all this epoxy around it. It's making a very hard edge. But on the other side, it's <clears throat> it's in the way of it going up on the other side. On the starboard side, I should say. Yeah, this here might be part of it. I gotta put the camera up, wait for a minute and just have at that. I'm sorry, ASMR fans, but there's only so much of this I can do without a head thing. It's also so close to the wood here, to the rudder, that it actually started digging in there. But I'm making progress. I'm kind of rocking it out. I'm prying here while tapping back there with a hammer gently. It's coming. Whew, finally. I still have to move it up more to give these two room to clear when it comes up, but mostly I wanted to get at this area. Well, I still gotta get move it more. Still have it to move it more to get at that area because now it covered the part that needs to be scarfed or whatever we're gonna do to it. But I gotta clear that so it should move a lot easier now. I'm gonna have to sand up here a little first or something like that. I don't know. Figure it out. Looks like I'm going to need a more aggressive wheel for that. Before I could start sanding, I wanted to redo the scribe lines for the bootstripe. There's one at the waterline, the actual waterline, then a few inches up there's another one. I didn't want them to disappear when I sanded, so I had to make them a little deeper. You nail a bat into the boat, you take a saw blade without a handle and very gently go over them. For some reason I didn't record the part with the saw blade, but this gives you an idea basically of what that's about. It actually went pretty well. Then it was time to sand with some 80 grit screens. I found uh, a lot of this paint came off very easily. Some of it was a little reluctant here and there. But I figured, uh, especially up near the waterline, I would try to get rid of everything without going too deep. It became pretty obvious at this point that I needed <laughs> some better dust control. Uh, After learning my lesson about that on this day, I eventually rigged something with the vacuum cleaner that helps control the dust a lot more. You can wind up wasting a lot of time cleaning yourself off if you have to go back in the boat or get in your car to go somewhere. Then there's neighboring boats in the yard and the environment in general. The shallow draft of the Tahiti makes this pretty easy. Although, once you go down low near the garbers, you practically have to lie on your back. I didn't go all the way down. But when I was done with this first pass, she was already looking a lot better. And no sign of worms on this side, I'm happy to say. Just a couple of small areas that would need to be re -caulked.
Thank you.